we intend to skip over the collections? Yes. Yeah, okay. Oh, no, I think I'd like to go ahead and, and update on that. Okay, okay. please do. Um, yeah. Interestingly, um, all right, let's go through it historically. Last fall, we were just having awful time getting money out of Apollo, and uh, Chief Marie and um, Mr. Rogers all really said, look, Richard, you got to step in on this, and I did, and you guys told me to do that, and, and um, um, we got some money, and, you know, which was good, because about 30 days thereafter, uh, Hull um, was um, basically taken over by the state, it is no longer ex um, existing, um, the gentleman was running it, uh, for his father-in-law, has uh, been described um, informally to me as either being totally inept or a very crafty um, <laughs> uh, person to um, get money out of the uh, out of the system. So, and I, and I think that's going on. But the um, <clears throat> um, the court has. Um, um, gone ahead and, and had that uh, reviewed um, and, and by independent people um, and it, it, Apollo's not coming back. We, if you recall, two months ago transferred your uh, collection accounts that were existing and any new ex uh, collection accounts that we determined that we wanted to send to the law firm um, Anderson and Cott. And they were the ones that were doing the work and were very receptive to us when we got in touch with them and in fact um, were instrumental in getting us to the owner of the business who got us the money. So it was very useful. Uh, since that time, um, we um, um, have uh, Marie or the chief or both of them found a, a new system through the state of Colorado where it's going to start using its collection systems and Stan's nodding his head because he's been seeing the emails on this and uh, he's reviewed it, chief's reviewed it, Marie's reviewed it, I've reviewed it. Um, the state is basically already doing collection work for taxes that aren't paid and other things and so they are now reaching out to governments, um, uh, political subdivisions of the state to also do some of their work. And we don't have to send all our stuff, but whatever we send, they will um, add an 18%, uh, 18 or something. Yes, um, uh, Collection rate uh, to that, which they will then um, collect the 18% plus what, um, whatever they can of ours, and they'll take their 18% as, as payments get made and um, basically do the, all the same things that um, we would expect out of Anderson Kyle or even out of Apollo. They also have into it that they can go and turn this over to a collection agency or a law firm to pursue this, and which is proper. So um, uh, Stan's looked at it and wants this brought before the board, and um, I agree. Um, I think we need to go forward with this program. Uh, I hope that the uh, group that the chief has recommended and to whom we've gone to, to do those initial steps. That, if you don't get it then, the chances of you getting money falls off tremendously until it goes to nearly zero. And um, so, um, assuming that we get most of the money in the normal course, um, what you all have approved so far is a sending to collections any misdirected payments. And there are some. Um, you've got how many thousand? About six thousand. About six thousand dollars right now is outstanding. And what misdirected payments are is um, the insurance company says, oh yeah, Elk Creek needs to get paid. They write a check to the insured, the insured says, uh, not so much Elk Creek and puts it in their own pocket. And, um, and so um, those are the ones that, you know, and they, there may be reasonable excuses for why they do it, but the answer is we don't get the money unless we take some action. So 
because uh, the insurance company is going, sorry guys, we, we paid that. We're not paying it a second time. So um, uh, it's uh, pretty straightforward, and, and those will be the ones that I would now recommend that we give to the state agency um, to actually um, pursue it. And let's try it. I mean, giving it immediately to Anderson and Kyle, I mean, they can write a couple of letters, but, you know, they're first thing is going to pull the trigger on litigation and, you know, it, this might work a little bit better. I, we don't know until we try it. I think it's worth the, the effort and I recommend that the board um, go ahead and, and um, uh, adopt the agreement uh, with Central Collection Services of the state of Colorado. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, to um, take on all of our misdirected payments. And let's just start with that. If that works positively, and you want to, uh, and we've seen, uh, you know, if, we're, uh, if we don't get the kind of results we want from the group that we've gone to that's going to do the initial collections, then we might want to expand what we send over to the central collections. But I think for right now, this would be a good first step and, and try this out. This group just got going for outside agencies such as ourselves in January. So we're right on the cusp, and, and they're kind of, I mean, I kind of got from their uh, emails and stuff that they're kind of excited about getting some outsiders like us in there, so. Um, so you recommend we do this uh, tonight, then? I do. Okay, which means you should make a motion. I well, I'd, like to, I'd like to have a couple questions. I'm sure, sure. sure. Uh, so when a person gets a collection notice, are they going to get it from the state of Colorado? They yeah. are. Yes. Unless it's been sent to a collection agency, which they have the right to do. But they won't do that initially. They, I the first think letter, the first letter that goes out will be the state of Colorado. We can't guarantee that. We can't guarantee it, but that's my impression. They that are presently using well. three collection agencies. What they do is they evaluate the type of a claim that it is, and if they feel that they can be productive in collecting, they will work on it themselves internally. If they feel that there are, for some reason, circumstances that will not benefit them, then they'll use one of the outside agencies. But I think, especially with the types, and when I talked with her, I said, you know, the first thing we want to send you is restricted funds. And she said that they are easy. And so that... Do we have a, are we doing this for a specific period of time, or how are we... Uh, there, 30 days notice we're out. So the, the, the contract looks pretty voluminous. It is pretty voluminous. It's in your packet, <coughs> and, and uh, but you know it was generated by the attorney general of the state of Colorado. Would you expect it to be less than voluminous? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I I read it uh, in detail, and um, uh, well, I, can I nitpick over some stuff? Sure, but it's a you know standardized contract. Do I need to nitpick? I don't think so. I think, I think what we should do is try it. And um, uh, with 30 days uh, notice, we can get out and, and... What about Anderson and Kyle? Where do they sit? Well, we told them we would send them what we wanted to send them. That's all these guys are asking. If we don't send it to these guys, they, they do not expect to be our exclusive agents. So neither of them are exclusive but agents. But we, we have no relationship with Anderson and Kyle where they're expecting us to use them as the collection agents. No. We well, I mean, they may have that expectation to some extent. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, no, they don't have it. I haven't talked to Becky about that. But um, I, I don't think that, I mean, we were very clear that we weren't sure what, if anything, we were going to send them in the future. There were only four files in 2013 that went to Apollo that then um, Kyle got, and so she only she has got she's gotten nothing since then. And when nothing would, in most when would this doesn't. start? As soon as the controller signs it. So we send in the documents. So we can have a pretty good notion as to on these three items what kind of success they have. Exactly. I would say by your July meeting, um, I think you should put our feet to the fire. And when I say our, I'm going to look mostly at me. Um, and uh, and say, you know, get us some sense of what's going yeah. on. Well, I think that would be good, a report in July or August or whenever is convenient so that we 
get some feeling for just how this works. And, and if not, kind of we can go back to Anderson and Kyle. I mean, yeah. it, we don't even have to get rid of that. Just for everything right. future, we can go on to Anderson and Kyle and, yeah. and weigh the two. I mean, we had some success with Apollo early on, but since um, uh, Bill's been here, I don't think we've had any real success. We, we collected uh, approximately 4% of our, oh, of our billing um, during our time with Apollo. Right. And, and so it's just, it's not been a successful adventure. Um, I think we need to now look at this. I mean, 4%, when you go through the numbers, um, and um, again, Bill kind of laid that out for us at our last committee meeting, isn't that amazing because of all the uh, governmental reasons that they don't have to pay us? And then um, how many people we don't have all the right information on? And how many people don't have any insurance and don't have any money? I mean, once you get 4% made out of it, a bad number, really. But when you consider that we're putting a lot of time and effort, and to get some of that 4%, Marie had to go down and testify in court. Uh, on, on certain instances. So does, the, does the state expect us to do anything differently than what we're doing now? I don't see anything in this. Uh, I think they I think they think that the power of the state, and, and I, I'm not I'm not a guy who thinks government should utilize its power willy-nilly, but I think that's kind of their idea is, look, if you get a letter from the state, you're going to be a little more responsive um, than perhaps from the collection agency. I, I don't know. They can attach. Yeah, they can, they can attach. attach they can garnish. Um, as a matter of fact, I got a garnishment notice today for a former employee. Uh, obviously, we don't owe her anything or pay her anything, but she, um, you know, I got a, um, a garnishment. And and I tell you, even somebody who's been in this business for as long as I have. State of Colorado notice of you take you take a little bit of time, time yeah and, and look at that and say who what and where you know to make sure what's happening and and you don't want them you know miss deadlines and all that sort of thing with that so I, I do think it'll be a useful thing I think it's uh, uh, it may fizzle the state may pull the plug on this thing they may get into it and say this just isn't worth our our headaches we're getting all this silliness from fire districts and ambulance districts and hospital districts and all these other districts and we don't want that headache anymore and they could pull the plug uh, even before you pull the plug you know you're not <laughs> having stuff. just in the way of background i found out about this through west metro and their their controller and it was through getting the rates and we were discussing different issues and um they've been using them since the first part of February, and they're delighted. Great. And they came out of Apollo also. Yes. West Metro did. Yeah. And, and Anderson and Kyle. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that, that's always, you know, it's always nice to let our big brothers down on the flats yeah. do some of the, <laughs> yeah. the heavy lifting yeah. for us, and, and we kind of follow along. So, All right. Excellent. So, so we'll hear about the results of all of this time in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if, uh, if you're going to make a motion to adopt this, I would uh, recommend that we uh, adopt the agreement as attached in your packet um, and the related documents. Yes, thank you. Because there are a number of attachments. And it's called the Central Collection Services Political Subdivision Agreement. And then we need to go ahead and and adopt that plus the attachments there too, and um, um, uh, uh, authorize Mike Rogers to sign this agreement. Good with that. So moved. Second. <laughs> Unless you want me to. No, that's fine. You good with that? I think she got one. Are you good with that? Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks for the explanation. Yeah, and uh, and we, you know, this is part of that collections committee ongoing research. We're just going to keep doing this. Um, uh, you know, we've we've stepped away from just trying to 
uh, collect, 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 but to do a sensible collection, and we think this is the next. I, I actually read thing. through this, and it's like Richard said, it's contra contract language, but it seems pretty straightforward. It seems pretty straightforward to me. It's got to be pretty good, or you know, every special district lawyer like me is going to sit there and pick at it. So right. I think they had to make it pretty standard. Generic. Generic. Okay. Cool. Excellent. All right. All right. All right. Chief, okay. want to take away the uh, report section? Okay. Uh, sure. Um, so uh, April, uh, we had about 93, or 93 calls. Uh, pretty slow in terms of fires with uh, one cooking fire that uh, basically caused approximately $100 worth of damage of you know, a pot and some food. Um, and that was the all of the dam, uh, fire loss for the month, and then one dumpster fire as well. Um, motor vehicles slowed down uh, back to about a normal level, 17, 47 EMS calls, um, relatively a pretty quiet uh, month. Um, for training during the month, we did uh, finish the driver operator training, uh, and the EMT class is finishing up now. The uh, students. Uh, have been testing uh, to complete the EMT class. Uh, both of those were uh, the grant-funded uh, training programs. In addition, we offered the uh, uh, chainsaw training with, uh, I believe we had 24 uh, students out. Uh, knocked down a whole lot of trees in a couple of days. So, uh, a very successful class. And uh, the only other training that we're really scheduled to do uh, before the summer uh, comes along is the wildland urban interface class that's coming up next week and that's a class on how to basically prep structures uh, and uh, you know protect them during during wildfires so that should be a good training program um, let's see issues that, we, that we've got going on we do have uh, the squads been ordered uh, and um, the pickup truck that uh, is going to be replacing the, the old uh, Board that has 150,000 miles on it, and uh, we'll be meeting on the 29th to start the design work, um, the specification work on uh, the rescue pumper. And that's probably going to be a several month process to get through that and, and get uh, get that out to bid. Uh, we have a scheduled date for Evergreen to begin dispatching on the 19th uh, at 9 in the morning. Everything's going very smoothly. Currently with Evergreen and uh, with Jeffco, however, we're running into some issues with Park County. Um, despite the fact that uh, you know we've notified them six months ago that we were going to be making this, they've been asking for additional time uh, to try to work out uh, how they're going to actually transfer calls and how they're going to deal with auto aid uh, to Platte Canyon. So it's very unfortunate that they waited until 10 days before that uh, you know, tell us that they had concerns about it. Um, but uh, we're going uh, to go ahead with uh, notice to uh, terminate the services. Um, uh, Jeffco was fine with uh, with that uh, initial notice just from myself. However, Park County wanted a, wanted board concurrence on that, so I'm going to have to ask you for uh, for a motion to approve that uh, termination. Of services for Park County. Hey, do you guys have it? Have you seen it? I don't we saw, uh, we saw it. We saw it. The I email. saw an email. Yes, yeah, but okay. I didn't well, see it here. So, no, um, I don't, since I don't, you're going to have to sign it, I'd like a motion. And okay. That's what he's asking for to approve the chief and Mr. Branch to sign this termination letter so we can get it out and he can fax it over tomorrow. But this is exactly the same that we read on the email, right? Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about, so now, we get a 911 from a Park County resident in our district. Where does the 911 go? 911 calls always go to uh, what's called a PSAP or a public safety answering point, of which you know uh, there's one in Jefferson County, which is uh, the Jefferson County Sheriff. Right. And then they send that the 911 calls to the appropriate agency from there. Okay. So then that would go to. So on, agree. on the Park County side, right, when they get that phone call, you know, they'll, they'll find out that it's a fire call or EMS call in our district. They then transfer the phone call 
to Evergreen Fire. Okay. When you say they, is it Jeffco or is it Park County? If it's on the Park County side, it'll be Park County that does that. Even though we're signing this agreement saying we're not going to... They will still get the 911 calls. But they won't do the dispatch. Right. Right. That's the difference. That you've got your finger in that whole time. Right. And so, and, and the 911 calls now go to Jeffco. Jeffco will then, instead of giving it to their own dispatcher, they will give it to Evergreen for dispatch. The ones on the Jefferson County Jefferson side. Jefferson County side, right. yeah. Yes. And Park County will do the same. Yeah, but I mean, instead of the, instead of the call taking, switching to the dispatcher down at uh, Jeffco, at right. Jeff Coe, they'll switch to the Evergreen dispatcher and right. they'll actually make the dispatch. Right. And with Jeffco, this is an easier transition because currently they only dispatch about 2% of the fire calls in the county and the rest are transferred to West Metro or Arvada or Evergreen. Yeah. Um, Park County, on the other hand, has you know basically handled all of the Park County calls. Um, you know, it's basically kind of a one-stop shop. Uh, unfortunately, the you know, the it's a very small operation. I mean, their total, uh, you know, their the population of Park County is less than the population of our fire district. So the total call volume of the rest of the fire districts in in Park County is about equal to what we do in a year. Um, so, you know, they they can handle that with basically a, a very small staff. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, we, we do want to move both of them over because, it, you know, we've had for a period uh, where Park County has been dispatching uh, in addition to Jeffco, and that, is, that has been uh, far less than successful. Uh, they, um, there have been times where we're already out on a call that Jeffco has called us out on. Park County gets a cell phone call about the same thing tries to send us to the same call again. Yeah. And that happened again the other day. And, um, you know, so as a result, we ended up having to get more vehicles on the road, you know, because they, you know, they gave it as a different yeah. location. Yeah. Uh, it's been, it's been somewhat problematic. And, uh, you know, having a single dispatch agency is going to certainly help with, for us. And in fact, even, uh, even on the Park County side of our district, the Jefferson County dispatchers know this area better than... Yeah, that was going to be my point. If you think about it, you've got Fair Play residents, or Fair Play area residents, dispatching the Pine Junction. They don't know, you know, you say a road over here, and yeah, they, if they get the name right, it, they, they don't have the information fully. Mm -hmm. it's going to get, and so I think that's been one of the biggest problems. I represent a number of Park County fire districts too, and we have the same problems. <laughs> what about the once you get fr the further you get from Fair Play, yeah. the less. What you know. about the Platte Canyon interagency problem? We're going to have to uh, work that out. I mean, that's that's their biggest issue that they're looking at is how are they going to, you know, send both agencies and uh, we're what we're uh, you know what uh, Chief Wesseldine and I have talked about is that. If they get a call, they're going to go ahead and, and dispatch Platte Canyon, transfer the call to uh, Evergreen, and they'll dispatch us. Uh, but you know, it actually has worked out best for us, uh, you know, in the past to just get on the radio and talk to each other. We generally monitor their radio; they monitor ours, and that's been actually a lot more efficient than than yeah, having yeah. Airplay uh, dispatch us. All right. So, yeah, um, so I, I recommend a motion to um, uh, authorize uh, a great branch and uh, the chief to sign the termination letter of the MOU with Park County for the dispatch so that we can proceed with switching to Evergreen, knowing that not every wrinkle has been worked out. But that's so moved. Right. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 You got all that? I like the wrinkle part. She's asking me yes, if that's, yes. a yeah, that's a legal term. That's a legal term. I know that's you right. will. It's Latin. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so moving on, uh, Deputy Chief, uh, we do have two in-house candidates for that, and uh, we'll be conducting interviews uh, next week. 
uh, for those candidates. Um, I think that uh, we have uh, good candidates for that position. And we anticipate that we will be able to fill that uh, position in-house. Um, and we should know uh, sometime by the end of next week. Um, we uh, did have the Broken Arrow exercise on May 3rd uh, that uh, we've been working on for the last five months. Um, that's the, the fledgling state Colorado State mobilization uh, plan. <coughs> and um, that was uh, deemed a qualified success. Um, we, uh, you know, the original goal had been to put 30 fire engines uh, any place on the front range in uh, 90 minutes. Uh, I think that that was probably overly ambitious on the time schedule, given that you know many of those fire departments had uh, travel times of as much as an hour and 15 minutes, which left a very little time for the process of you know calling and, and uh, getting uh, getting apparatus dispatched. Uh, so we did get 47 apparatus in just under two hours, uh, which um, certainly is a, is a an exercise that we've never seen on on this scale in Colorado, and um, it's uh, already generated um, a considerable uh, improvement in the amount of resources that are going to be available for major uh, incidents. Uh, prior to when we started putting this together, there were a total of uh, six strike teams uh, that the Metro Denver area had put together, uh, and then the one strike team, which is ours, that uh, was put together independently. Uh, since that time, we've added strike teams in El Paso, well, Larimer counties. Um, we're getting a southwest strike team in the Durango area one in the Colorado River area, uh, Summit Grand, um, and then we've got some interest, actually the east uh, one set, or on I-70. Um, so we're, we're anticipating that even by uh, the 1st of June, we will have doubled the amount of resources that we have available to respond uh, quickly to major incidents in the, in the state. What, what would the average strike team be consist of? It's uh, f five, engines and or tenders depending on the configuration that's requested uh, along with a separate uh, officer a strike team leader right. that uh, that travels down there and we've got pre you know pre-identified types so there's you know type 1 engines or brush trucks or uh, you know what we call uh, wildland urban interface task forces that are mixed um, and um, you know we've been working We've had representatives from the three biggest uh, mobilization systems in the country uh, sitting on, at the table, myself from Washington, um, Chief Riley, who came out of, uh, of Colorado Springs, who came out of California, and then uh, Chief uh, Trudy from uh, Monument, who came out of the uh, Chicago mutual aid system. And those are the three kind of premier systems in the country so you know that's why the you know we sat down as kind of the core group to help to develop this uh, this program, uh, along with participation by Department of Emergency Management, uh, Fire Prevention and Control, uh, the U.S. Forest Service. I mean, we've had quite quite good participation from outside agencies. How was the feedback well. amongst the people who actually went? It was good. We had uh, we had a handful of issues that uh, we identified. Obviously, it was the first time out. And the dispatch process of, you know, Douglas County called, you know, to Metcom, which is the, the state kind of clearinghouse for that. Then they had to call, for example, to Evergreen. Then Evergreen had to call for, you know, it, they toned out the Evergreen, Inner Canyon, North Fork, and us. But then in order to get Genesee and Fairplay, who are on different dispatch, centers, they had to then call to those dispatch agencies. And a couple of those outlying ones, particularly Fair Play and, and Jeffco, kind of dropped the ball. Uh, but other than that, you know, we had, we had a, really good, a really good system set up, and we've already identified ways that we can basically uh, cut some of those communication uh, loops down a little bit uh, by going to 
a direct uh, texting to all of the uh, strike team coordinators and, and strike team leaders uh, throughout the state so that they'll be able to basically punch in a very short text message, hit a send button, and we'll all get notification immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and that, again, is, is also uh, you know, uh, basically replicating what we had set up in Washington State where we found that that texting system worked faster than, you know, making phone call after phone call uh, to get people responding. We're learning from our children, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, our kids do it all day long. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, so, you know, we've, we've got a good start of this, uh, but uh, you know, we, and we've got another drill that uh, Elk Creek won't be participating in with engines, but I'll be uh, coordinating uh, for the state up in Larimer County next week. Uh, and then following that, uh, we're going to be meeting with the uh, uh, Colorado State Chiefs to start hammering out some of the, some of the kind of political questions that, that come up from all of this, like how do we develop a statewide mutual aid agreement that covers every department in the state? How do we deal with uh, reimbursement issues when you know they all all of the agreements that are currently out there have different uh, terminology? So what we're what we're trying to move to is a single statewide mutual aid system uh, that uh, you know has very clear uh, very clear rules and, and uh, very uh, is, is very transportable from one county to the next. And uh, what we anticipate is that that part of it you know is going to probably take at least as long as the process of just getting the initial dispatching and organization part of it that we spent the last six months putting together. Uh, so that uh, that's going to continue to be uh, an issue as we move ahead. But even this fire season, do you think we have a heads up with, with just this, the, these two exercises going on? Oh, absolutely, because at this time we have, you know, we'll have uh, 11 strike teams basically available and you know what what we look at is something like the black forest fire and what happened there was once you know El Paso uh, County used up all their local resources everything bogged down and from there to the point where they were able to bring in you know enough engines to handle uh, you know, the incident was pretty close to two days and what we're trying to do is to be able to say, okay, next time the Black Forest fire happens, you make one phone call, and we'll get 50 fire engines there, you know, and, and not wait, and not wait, right? Because the you know the processes that have been, been in the place place in the past have been extraordinarily slow. Uh, for example, when State uh, Department of Emergency Management, you know, is calling resources to ask them to go, in the past they've had to make a phone call every fire department and try to get you know the right person at the fire department to say oh well yeah we're willing to go or no we, we can't go at this time and under this system you know they won't have to do that it'll basically the you know it goes out and people have already identified you know whether they're available or not and the contact information so that you know one phone call right now with the exercise one phone call gets you five or six fire engines instead of one. Well, as we move to the texting system, basically one text should be able to get you 30 to 50 fire engines. You know, instead of having to make 30 to, actually it was more like 100 phone calls in the past because at least half the people that you called wouldn't be able to send something. So, you know, we're, I mean, we're really, right now we've got the efficiency side of it um, with obviously some bugs but it's, it's moving ahead. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the next part of that is how do we solidify this into a long-term plan for the state? That's great. Very encouraging. Yeah, really. yeah. We're fortunate that you brought your expertise with you when you came. Absolutely. <laughs> then you didn't leave it in Washington. That's yeah. right. That's <laughs> right. That was an option, but we told them. Yeah. 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 He needed yeah. to bring it good. Bring it. Otherwise, it would have been half salary. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That wouldn't have been a good idea. Mr. Brantz, do you need me any more? Because I'm going to go to my other meeting if you don't. Uh, no, uh, unless uh, this transport uh, rate review, are we going to go through with that tonight and discussing that? Uh, and if so, do we need uh, Richard for that? Or 
I think that will pro that probably should go back to the committee. Um, you know, for for review. That would be my okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the, the I mean, it's very it's very interesting, but I think okay. it needs a little more work. I think we're good then. Thanks. All right. Appreciate it. Yep. I'll Thank be you. here next month. And uh, sounds good. Uh, you all have a great evening, and I'll talk to you as soon. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? Don't get caught in the blizzard. No, it's not Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. 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 It's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. So, you Sunday. know, it just Sunday. depends Sunday. on the direction. <laughs> See ya. Okay, Bye. thanks again. Thank you. Uh, did you were you going to talk about the uh, last item real quick? Um, yes, uh, as far as uh, right now we've got, uh, in terms of community relations, we, we do have um, the newsletter okay. coming out. It's been a little bit late, primarily because uh, pretty much the entire newsletter committee has been taking the MT class and they're all in finals right now so um, yeah, I've had to give them a little bit of slack to finish that up before we uh, uh, get that out so we should have that out within the next uh, within the next two weeks um, generally it takes about that long to get printed and, and sent and then we do have uh, as well a couple of uh, additional communities that are working on firewise plans uh, and uh, we've been actually very active in uh, mitigation visits this year. Uh, uh, Captain Ware has been taking those over and has been doing probably s six to ten a week at this point. So um, we continue to see those increasing every spring. Obviously, uh, it falls off in the, in the fall and winter, but uh, springtime, we get a lot of calls for it. So that's, uh, that's been a very active program. No progress on uh, permanent slicing. Uh, what has happened is, um, you know, they the the slash burner has been put on hold. Uh, the county has gone out for a request for proposals, and they basically left it very open to say, somebody come up with an idea and sell it to us. And uh, they're in that process. I don't know what they're going to get out of that. Whether that's going to be someone coming forward with a site, someone coming forward with another way of getting rid of it, uh, but uh, the whole thing remains in limbo at yeah. this time. Yeah. Um, not to put you too much on the spot, but I was going to bring this up and do business, but I won't wait now. Just out of curiosity, would you be comfortable at least highlighting your uh, very recent article, which will go in the newsletter, talking about the progress and so forth of the, uh, of the, uh, of the fire department? Okay, sure. Just the uh, highlights? Um, yeah, what, what that, uh, that article in the newsletter is going to address is, uh, you know, when we, um, when we advertised the, the mill levy, um, you know, basically what we were going to be doing with that, we were uh, planning on replacing uh, the two fire engines, uh, the two tenders, and uh, purchasing uh, PPE for personnel. And, um, you know, obviously we've already got the two engines in place. Uh, the two tenders are, are on order. Uh, we've been purchasing the PPE. And um, in addition, we've, uh, uh, brain fart there. Um, <laughs> pretty going? Bidding. Hmm? Bidding. Oh, uh, yes, one of, the, one of the things that we did want to bring up was that, uh, you know, that, that it was all done on, uh, on competitive bid, and then we were able to uh, all of those apparatus came in well under budget. Um, two of them were uh, went through HME. Uh, two of them went uh, to E1. And of course, one of the things that uh, we did want to make sure that everybody in the community knew was that uh, you know the E1 uh, sales representative is a volunteer for our organization. Um, and, but you know even at that, we did not award the HME bid to him because he was not low bid. Uh, the, his company was low bid on the tenders, uh, and um, that's not really surprising in that the tenders are very similar to the two tenders that we have that were also provided by that company uh, before um, you know he was here as a volunteer. So uh, you know that uh, that was a decision that was made solely on the basis of the, of the low bid. Um, you know, two other things that have, have been working out. You know, as far as Remaining very fiscally responsible with this has been that uh, we've, um, 
you know, saved about 75% of the cost of both our fire marshal uh, program and, um, and in uh, transferring our maintenance program over to Evergreen. So uh, rather than have paying salaries and benefits uh, for personnel who weren't 100% uh, of their time wasn't required for either of those, uh, of their, their job duties um, by utilizing uh, the services of, of Evergreen Fire, we, you know, we've been able to make uh, significant savings for the district. And we anticipate that uh, in all of those areas, both the capital areas and capital purchases and uh, maintenance and, and fire prevention, that we're going to remain under budget this year uh, as we move ahead. So what it comes down to is you're spending the money the way you said you were going to spend it. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Excellent. Any questions, guys? Oh, no, good. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So we uh, we agreed then on the old business that um, the transport rate review will defer that. Is there any other old business? Okay. Uh, how about new business? Oh. Okay. Any uh, citizen issues? Except for the lady in the back row. She should be excused. She gets, she gets a separate treatment. She should be excused. Yes. Okay. Uh, in that case, I think we should take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Second? All right. All in favor. All right. All right. Thank you very much. So.